Good afternoon to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. It is September 5th, 2021, and it was 25 years ago today that we dealt with Hurricane Fran, the first eye of a hurricane that I was in. Um, I got pretty close to it in Bertha just a few weeks before, but Fran was the first time I ever experienced the eye of a hurricane. That was 25 years ago today. Uh, the first year that I started my career, way back in 1996, graduated from college in 95, really got things going in 1996, and this is just a little bit of a recap of it. It uh, came in right over my location, just west of Wilmington. I lived over in Leland, North Carolina. The eye went right over me. It was incredible, and it was actually the very first time, believe it or not, that I would experiment with using unmanned camera technology. This is just a little bit of the video that I shot way back when it was 4x3. Horrible quality compared to what we have now, right? Uh, just a few clips from my house there in Leland. No children yet. Had just gotten married on August 16th that year. So my wife was working up at the uh, hospital in Pender County as a nurse. And this is what it looked like from my driveway. Uh, Fran coming in there and knocking down trees and putting a big storm surge into parts of the region, uh, Wrightsville Beach up to Surf City, Topsail Beach, that area. Uh, pretty devastating hurricane, big flooding issues with it as well. Up into Raleigh, Wake County, they had uh, hurricane conditions up there. And I know somewhere in here, let's see, I put my, um, this is when it got dark, it made landfall at night, of course. This is my first experience dealing with them at night. Had a big old spotlight. I didn't yet have a chase vehicle, so to speak, but I did have a Nissan Sentra. And um, as it got dark, I was like, I'm not going to miss the eye wall of this thing. And so what I did is I took my uh, Nissan and backed it into, that's my very first tracking map that I produced. So I took the uh, Nissan and I backed it into the carport there and aimed the uh, camera, the video camera, out into the carport area of the driveway on a tripod and just left the camera running while I was inside, you know, safe, if you will. So this was really the first unmanned camera ever 25 years ago that I did. Uh, it was able to film that eye wall on the, with the uh, lights of the uh, Nissan lighting up the way. I was like, I'm going to see that eye wall one way or the other. And so this is where it all started 25 years ago. If you uh, dealt with Fran yourself, you remember how that was. All right, so back to uh, where we are with the tropics. If I can get me to come back on. Uh, nothing out there like that right now, thank goodness. We do have Larry out in the open Atlantic. Not going to be a problem except for the swells that it'll generate. And those can be problematic if you don't respect them and understand the power of those swells and the rip currents that they can produce. We'll go over that more in detail tomorrow when we can start looking at the different area forecasts along the Atlantic seaboard and some of the areas down in the Caribbean. Because there's going to be some pretty big swells, these long period swells that will radiate out from very strong Hurricane Larry. Pretty big wind field with it. And then we have this area 91L down in the, just coming off the Yucatan there, 30% chance of development. And I'm not really concerned about that. It's the pattern kind of after that that I'm starting to get a little bit more concerned about that, yes, we could see uh, a little bit more activity brewing somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico here as we get towards mid-month, unfortunately. But you know what? We knew this could be happening. It's a very busy season, so this isn't a big surprise. You know, we just have to deal with it and be aware of it, and that's what I'm here to help you do. All right, so here's Larry and the track off of our interactive map. There's Bermuda up here in this area, so the center, the core of Larry should pass well to the east of Bermuda. Maybe some strong winds, uh, gusty winds from time to time, possibly some tropical storm force wind. We'll just wait and see. Certainly some rough surf, maybe a couple of squalls pass through. We will be able to jump on uh, the camera that we have, a permanent camera at Howard's place there in Bermuda, and check this out as Larry passes by. And this just nice cumulus field today. Take this full screen for a second. We'll check and see what this looks like when Larry passes by. Well, to the south and east, right? Uh, hopefully. Uh, this would be coming up on the 9th. So just a few days from now, about four days out, early in the morning. So during the day, when I do my update that day, 
We'll zoom in here and take a look at where Larry is. See if it is, in fact, that close or that far away or whatever. We'll see. And then we'll take a look at the camera that we have in Rodanthe and see if the swells, I'll be able to zoom in to this area right here. These Nest Cams are great. You can actually digitally zoom and we'll zoom in and see what the swells look like out here. You got surf checks and all kinds of other sites where you can watch that kind of stuff too. But we have our own little network that we're slowly growing thanks to the support of our crowdfunding folks all over the world. Really neat to see and we appreciate that. So here's a satellite animation uh, courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com. As always, Dr. Cowan, still getting used to saying that. Dr. Levi Cowan has done a great job with this over the years. We appreciate it being available. There's Larry out in the open Atlantic, not bothering anybody except any shipping interest out that way. Other than that, that's it. But those swells will radiate out, make their way eventually towards land. They are already doing so down in parts of the islands. So just keep that in mind. The surfers are going to like it a lot. But avid swimmers, novice swimmers, avid, maybe that's not right, the word, novice swimmers. If you're not real good at swimming, you got to be really, really careful. Uh, and then down here is the energy associated with 91L. Got to watch this. It could try to come together somewhere along the northern Gulf Coast up here. Briefly, maybe becoming a tropical depression or a tropical storm. More of a rainmaker than anything else. We'll watch that closely. No indication at all in the reliable guidance that this could become strong enough to bring high-end impacts. Heavy rain, squally conditions, some onshore flow, you could get a little bit of storm surge and rough seas, but nothing in the modeling to get worried about with 91L just yet, so I want to make that very clear. Later down the road, as I'll show you on the GFS, we might have something a little bit more formidable as the Madden-Julian oscillation swings back towards a more favorable phase, usually around phase three favors that area. That could be coming up in the next uh, week or so, so we'll see. Out in the far eastern Atlantic, kind of dry, tropical wave coming off, must be some Saharan air out here. Just a big void of deep thunderstorm activity. I mean, look at that. Definitely a dry air intrusion coming out here off of the deserts of western and uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Real quick, the... Uh, before we get to the forecast, the ACE right now, the ACE score, accumulated uh, cyclone energy. Uh, over here is where it says that, accumulated cyclone energy. And then the climatology from 71 through 2020, that's this bluish area right here. And we are above the norm. And at this pace, you know, we'd be well above the normal. And I bet that's what happens. This is going to be potentially a hyperactive season, especially if we get a couple of intense hurricanes going at the same time. Uh, these long-lived hurricanes, kind of like Larry is, it's been out there for a few days, now it's going to be out there for a few days longer, really pushes that ACE score up. And again, that is the measure of the amount of energy that is expended. So it gives you the quality of the storms and hurricanes, not just the quantity. And that's a good measurement for scientists to keep up with how things are going uh, with these tropical storms and hurricanes. So. Speaking of that, do we have anything to kind of look for in the future? Don't say look forward to, but look for, look out for. Well, there's Larry. There's Bermuda tucked in here somewhere. And a little bit of energy that I just showed you coming off Africa. Virtually nothing in the vorticity field for 91L. So let's just move this out into time. We're going to look at the next seven days just to give you an idea of what to look for. Uh, so there's Larry moving on along. We're out uh, at about... Let's see, try to get this out into time. 24 hours out, there we go. So tomorrow morning, Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And then we've got another 24 hours. This is 48 hours, so Tuesday morning. Finally, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, at this point in time, there's Bermuda, just to pick it out for you, right there. So Larry, a good distance away, but probably going to see a tropical storm watch. Maybe tropical storm warning if it's got a big enough wind field. We'll take a look at that more tomorrow and Tuesday. And you notice, too, throughout this time frame, that little impulse over the Gulf, it's right there by the time we get out to day four, really not amounting to much. But keep your eyes on this energy here. Tropical waves, they come across, they don't do much, but then their energy ends up over here, and they kind of pile in to this vorticity and this overall kind of cyclonic gyre that we have hanging out over Central America. It's kind of a weak cyclonic or what we call Central American gyre. 
just a very fancy way of indicating this broad cyclonic turning in here. Then you get these pieces of energy, these tropical waves that pile in there, and they add energy and heat, and eventually there's enough that something can kind of pivot around, close off, and you're off to the races. And that's exactly what happened with Ida, just so you know. Uh, so got to watch that. This, that's day four. We go out to day five here, 120 hours. Larry is on its way up into the northwest Atlantic. Might get somewhat close to Newfoundland and vicinity to be of some concern. This is day six. At day seven, and we'll stop right here, you start to see the beginnings of the potential genesis somewhere in the Bay of Campeche. Another piece of energy over here in the Atlantic, a weaker piece there. Um, this is a week out. We'll see the GFS starting to rumble. Chatter is increasing about something developing potentially within this area right through here in about a week's time. And, you know, as I said, that makes sense. There's no, like, cause for concern just yet. We would normally look to that area. We're getting into the month of September, and we're going to shift eventually from the eastern Atlantic back more towards the western Atlantic. Really, we only had Larry out there so far in the main development region. There'll probably be one or two more. But the western Atlantic, southwest Atlantic, Caribbean, and the Gulf, that seems to be where the energy is piling up last year and this year, very focused in those areas. Um, and so it's not a big surprise. That doesn't help you. You know, it's, it doesn't, um, just because we anticipate it doesn't make it easier, but at least we know it could be coming and you could have time to get ready, uh, whatever that may mean, you know. And right now it's just something, a little bit of an uptick in, in the operationals and some in the ensemble. Uh, like we say, it's kind of noise, chatter, people talking about it. So don't look at any one run that somebody posts and there's a big hurricane parked at your doorstep and then you get all worried about it. That is not helpful and so just don't don't fall for that as they say. All right, we'll watch it together and see how things evolve. Plenty of time, all right, plenty of time. We need people to be able to get their lives back in order as best as they can down in Louisiana and even parts of Mississippi um, that were impacted by Ida uh, but it is still hurricane season. We can't ignore that fact and hope these things away, so to speak. So we've got to stay on top of it, but be reasonable in the way that we do so, not jump to any conclusions, and just kind of look at it together. All right? Have a good rest of your Sunday, and be careful out there if you're traveling for Labor Day weekend. It's always good to have you on that side of the screen, but you can't do it if you're dead on the side of the road somewhere. I know that sounds very morbid, but I care about you all. I appreciate you being there for me. It's a symbiotic relationship the way I look at it, and it's good to have you. So do be safe out there if you're traveling, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. I'm Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. Again, we'll chat uh, some more about it tomorrow.